welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 185, Extract from the First Dash to the Last Dash. All right, today's question sent in by Anvar on YouTube. How can I extract everything from the first dash to the last dash? And check out this data he has here. There are a huge number of dashes, anywhere from three, uh, five, six, seven dashes. All right, so my first thought is, well, hey, it's really easy to find the first dash, right? Equal left or equal mid of the find of uh, A2 and then the dash plus one. Right, but to get to the last dash, that's going to make my head hurt, right? Because, well, how many, how many, uh, how many dashes do we have? We could take the substitute of a2, replacing the dashes, and compare the length of that to the original length. That tells me the number of dashes. But now I know which dash to find: the second, third, fourth, fifth. But do I use find? Certain? Ah. I was ready to go to VBA, right? That's my that's my knee-jerk reaction. I said, wait a second. I said, Anvar, what, what version of Excel are you in? He says, I'm in Excel 2016. I said, that's beautiful. If you're in Excel 2013 or newer, uh, we could use this great new feature called Flash Fill. With Flash Fill, uh, we just have to give it a pattern. And I'm going to give it enough of a pattern. Uh, so it's not just that I'm taking one with two dashes uh, and doing that a couple of times. I want to make sure that I have a few different dashes. So that way, Chad on the Excel team uh, knows what I'm looking for. Chad's the guy that wrote uh, the logic for Flash Fill. So I get about three of them in there, and then Control E is the shortcut for using data and then uh, Flash Fill. And sure enough, it looks like it did the right thing. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Yep. Flash Fill wins. That feature right there, Flash Fill, is one of the modern Excel tools that is simply amazing. If it's a one-time deal and you have a consistent pattern, hey, that's the way I would do it. Hey, let's go over to the next sheet. Now, instead of using Flash Fill, we can actually use Power Query. Now, I'm using Excel 2016, so I have the Get and Transform group that's Power Query. In earlier versions, 2013 to 10, you actually have to download the free Power Query add-in. Now, in order to get Power Query to work, this has to be converted to an Excel table. Now, again, I would use Flash Fill if this was a one-time deal. When would you use Power Query? Well, if you had really big data or it was coming from an external source, this would be the way to go. Or you might even like this better than having to type three or four examples for Flash Fill, because with Power Query, we can specifically say, find the first dash and find the last dash. Now I'm going to convert this to an Excel table. I have a single cell selected, empty cells all the way around. I go to Insert Table or use the keyboard Control-T. I can click OK or Enter. I want to name this table, so I go up to Table Tools Design. Up into Properties, I'm going to call this Start Key Table and Enter. Now I can go back to Data, bring it into Power Query using the From Table button. There's my column. There's the name. I don't want to keep this name because the output will be exported to Excel. And I want to give it a different name. So I'll call it Cleaned Key Table. I don't need that change type. I'm just looking at the source. Now I can click on the column. And right up in Home, there's the Split button. I can say Split by Delimiter. Looks like it already guessed. I'm going to say left most. Click OK. Now, if I look over here, I see change type. I don't need that, so I'm going to get rid of that step. I only have split column by delimiter. Now I'm going to do this again, but instead of using the split button up here, right click down to split column by delimiter. And look at that. We can choose to split it by the right most delimiter. Click OK. Now, I don't need these two columns, so I'm going to right click the column I want to keep, remove other columns. I'm actually going to X this change type out. It's going to say, are you sure you want to delete this? I'm going to say, yes, delete. There's my clean data. Now I can come up to close and load, close and load to. This is the new import dialog box. It used to say load to, 
but I want to load it to a table on an existing worksheet. Click the Collapse button. I'm going to select C1, Uncollapsed, click OK. And there we go, Power Query to clean our data and get just the data we want. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. There's the point right there, rightmost delimiter in the split column by delimiter, one of the cool features in Power Query. That's awesome. All right, my knee-jerk reaction, VBA UDF. This will be really easy to do with VBA. Switch over to Alt F11, insert a module in that module. Uh, type this code. I'm going to create a brand new function. I'm going to call it midpart. I'm going to pass it uh, some text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the last character in that cell, from the length of my text, back to 1, step minus 1, and look at that character. So the mid of my text, that variable i tells us which character we're looking at for length of 1. Is it a dash? As soon as I find a dash, I'm going to take the left of my text, starting at character i, minus 1. So I get rid of everything from that last dash, all the way out, and then to make sure I don't go keep looking for more dashes, the exit 4 will get me out of this for next loop, and from there is the easy part. We're just going to take the my text, start uh, at the mid of my text, where use the uh, function find to find the first dash, go one more than that, and return that back. So let's go back, uh, Alt Q to return to Excel, equal mid part tab of that, and it looks like it's working. Copy that down. Mike, do you have another one? Well, I do have another one, Mr. Excel, but it it's going to be one long formula, not as short as that UDF. All right, let's go over to the next sheet. Now, if we're going to do a formula, and we have some text, and there are always a different number of delimiters. Somehow, I need to get the position of that last delimiter. Now, this is going to take a few steps, but I'm going to start with the substitute function. I'm going to look through that text, comma. The old text I want to find is, in double quotes, that dash, comma. And what do I want to put in its place or substitute? Double quote, double quote. That will put nothing in. Now, if I close parentheses and control enter, what is that going to do? Well, now I can take the length of this and subtract it from the length of this item. That will tell me how many delimiters there are. F2, and right at the beginning, I'm going to type the length of that. That will give me the full length minus the length of that dashless text. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. That tells me how many delimiters there are. For this text, there are six. Now I'm going to use that sixth now inside of substitute to put a different character right at the sixth listing of the delimiter, F2. And if I type substitute, what we want to notice is this function has an instance number. If you look at other text functions like search and find, they don't have an instance number. Substitute is the only one I can think of that actually lets you specifically say which instance of a delimiter you want to deal with. Here's the text, comma. Old text is in double quotes a dash. And I need to pick for the new text some character that will never be in this text string. I'm going to choose like caret or something like that, comma. And that's where instance number comes in. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and there it is. If I double click and send it down, it's always putting that caret in the position of the last delimiter. Now I need to figure out in each one of these what position it, it is in. F2, I'm going to use the search function. Search, I type S and tab. Now, search and find are the same, except for search is not case sensitive. In this case, either one would be fine, because the text I'm looking for is in double quotes, that caret, and double quotes, comma, within that text. By the way, the reason that I use search instead of find is because S tab gets me search, but FI tab will get me fine. So it's like one character less when typing it out. 
Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. And now it tells me in the 27th position is that last delimiter. Now I'm going to take this approach for these text items. I'm now going to use the left function and get everything from the very beginning all the way up to that position. That will get rid of that last little bit. Now actually, search tells us 27, which is right there, and we only want to go to 26. So F2 and at the end, I'm going to minus 1, Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. Now I can use the left function, F2, left. There it is, left of that, comma. That's how many characters. Close parentheses, Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. So now we have gotten rid of the last little bit after the last delimiter in every cell. Now all I need to do is replace the first four characters. First four characters, first three characters. Now I can use the search function on the original text because it can find the dash, which is three. And I'll tell replace. Please go from the first character three characters in and replace it with nothing. F2 and right at the beginning, I'm going to type replace. There's the old text. Now watch this. I want to give myself a little bit more breathing room. I'm just going to artificially pick a space. Alt-Enter. That's kind of like we do in DAX. Now I just have more breathing room. That's the old text, comma. The starting number, I need to always start at the first position. So I simply type 1, comma. And I need to find that first dash, which represents number of characters. So S, tab, double quotes, dash, and double quotes, comma through within that text, that search will find 443. That will work. Close parentheses. And then comma, new text, double quote, double quote. That will put nothing in those first characters. Close parentheses. I have the entire column highlighted, so I can populate this edited formula with Control-Enter. And there we go, all the way down. We're extracting everything between the first and the last dash. Now, the only reason we want to be crazy like that with formulas is if we wanted the formula result to instantly update whenever we change anything. So if I type dash 00, instantly it updates. Power Query and Flash Fill will not automatically update. All right, send it back to Mr. Excel. Well, that was one heck of a formula, Mike. Substitute was the trick. I had used substitute in the first step, but f didn't see that it had the instance number. All right, so we have four different methods to here today. Uh, my first method is flash fill. Uh, select a, a first view, select the blank box below that, and then control E to flash fill. Mike's method, use power query. I love that, especially the uh, split data, uh, letting you use the leftmost dash and then the rightmost dash. In my live seminars, I always talk about this one feature uh, should be a finalist for the Nobel Prize for the best Excel feature. It wouldn't win, but it'd be in one of the top five, I'm sure. Uh, my method number three, VBA function, a UDF, user defined function that iterates from the end of the cell. And then Mike's method, the awesome formula method, you use substitute to find the location of the nth dash and then pass that answer back into substitute that tells you which instance number to look from. Brilliant. Well, there you go. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.